What's up everyone, this is Josh from Mesos Healing. Today I wanna to talk about how do I regularly make calcium without taking calcium. But before we get started, as always, please like this video, show us a little more support. Subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button as well. So every single Wednesday when we put out a video, you get notified. Let's jump in. Now here's the thing. We've been brainwashed and essentially lied to that calcium is the best mineral that we can take in because milk does a body good and if we get calcium, our bones are going to be stronger. You have been lied to because what you've been taught is, number one, that calcium is the most important mineral, and number two, that your bones are only made up of calcium. But they forget to tell you that your bones are made up of 12 different minerals and trace minerals, potassium, selenium, zinc, magnesium, right? We could keep going. There's many that are in there plus calcium. But you've been brainwashed and lied to believe to believe that if you take in calcium, you will have strong bones. Unfortunately, this isn't true. Why? Because of like a lot of things in the body, vitamin D doesn't regulate vitamin D, iron doesn't regulate iron, and calcium does not regulate calcium. There you have it. We could say bye-bye, but let's dive in a little bit. So calcium is actually regulated by three things, parathyroid hormone, vitamin D and calcitonin, but all of these three things are regulated by magnesium. Not just magnesium, but it's a huge piece of the puzzle. Magnesium regulates parathyroid hormone. It's that simple. I put a post in the description with a research to kind of show you this. Number two, magnesium regulates vitamin D. Now, of course, there's a bigger piece to this. And if you want to head to our Instagram at Real Food Gangsters, we have a highlight on vitamin D to break this all down. This is a big topic. But of course, vitamin D plays a role with calcium metabolism. But magnesium plays a huge role in activating receptors as well as retinol, so we can convert storage to active. But under chronic stress, we deplete magnesium. And this is a protective mechanism in a sense because the body doesn't want to convert any more storage into active because we don't want to keep absorbing calcium and increase the calcification in this inflammatory state because anytime we increase vitamin D, we're going to push calcium into the cell. This is going to cause calcification. We're not going to produce energy. We're not going to produce water. We're going to produce hydrogen peroxide, inflammation, forest fire. And we don't want to be there because we're already in a chronically stressed state. So this magnesium affects vitamin D conversion, but the body does this as a protective mechanism so we cannot support this inflammatory state and prevent this increased calcification. And third, magnesium regulates calcitonin, which regulates calcium because it keeps calcium in the bones where it is actually should be, right? Now, it was shown by Andrea Fuchs or Catherine Fuchs, sorry, that when we regulate magnesium, we regulate the absorption and usage of calcium. But the problem is when there's too much calcium in the system, it prevents the absorption of magnesium because magnesium is a very, it regulates over 300 enzymatic reactions in the body. And I'm not saying like just eat magnesium or take magnesium and your world's going to open up. That's not what I'm saying because healing is a puzzle. And when you talk about minerals, it's all about a symphony, an orchestra. It's not just one mineral, right? But it regulates over 300 enzymatic reactions. But when you produce energy, right, through that last step in complex form of the mitochondria and you activate oxygen and you produce energy in water, right, the only way ATP, which is energy to use, is magnesium kind of grabs onto it. So without magnesium, that ATP in water is useless. We keep producing hydrogen peroxide. That fire, that inflammation keeps getting bigger and bigger. We don't want calcium to be there right? We want to be able to decrease stress so we can not only absorb and regulate calcium, but not overdo it so we deplete magnesium even further. And anytime we have an imbalance between that, and let's say we have excess calcification in the cell and in the system, it can show up, right? Um, I think it was PhD Andrea Rosanoff said that it can show up as constipation, heart flutters, high blood pressure, anxiety, restlessness, sleeplessness, right? We can keep going, it's calcification in the body, bone spurs, thing, tight tissues, fascia that won't release, right? And here's the issue, um, we have everyone just gobbling up calcium and we shouldn't be. I'm not saying that you don't need it, but I truly believe based on 22 years of clinical experience and doing HTMAs, most people don't need as much as they think they need, right? Because calcium doesn't regulate calcium. We can get calcium from eating a variety of foods besides just dairy, but we shouldn't be hyper-focusing on it, right? Because what we see on HTMAs is 
people's calcium levels through the roof, right? It is through the roof. It is eight to 10 to 15, 20 times the normal level that it should be. And this is a problem because what this shows us is there's calcification in the cell. There is a forest fire, there is inflammation. And when this happens, then we have a huge problem now, right? We can't produce energy. We can't produce copper rich antioxidants. We can't put out the fire, right? And at the same time, other things start begin to happen. You know, um, the calcium potassium relationship in the body regulates the thyroid. So anytime calcium goes way high, you throw off that ratio to potassium and now thyroid hormone can get in the cell. We create this thyroid resistance. So these are the people that are taking thyroid hormone and it doesn't work. So they increase the dose. If it doesn't work, they increase the dose, right? There's the thyroid resistance. It doesn't matter how much you take, your cells are resistant to it. The doors won't open, right? So I truly believe it's not taking, it's not about taking calcium. I don't think anyone needs a calcium supplement, anyone. I don't think anyone needs to take vitamin D, anyone, because we can eat the foods. Right? We can eat the foods that contain calcium. We can eat the foods that contain vitamin D, like organ meats and cod liver, right? You know, possibly a clean cod liver like rosetas, right? Um, eggs and dairy and fatty fish and all these different things that contain vitamin D. And yes, we should be getting outside more, but the sun is not the only way we get vitamin D. Remember, there's retinol, there's magnesium, there's foods that contain vitamin D. And at the same time, this is a big topic, but everyone's testing the storage form. It should be low. You want to test the active form 125 as well as the storage. That relationship will show you if there's inflammation, right? What is happening, but it never comes down to take more D. It's showing you there's inflammation in the system. And this goes back to calcium, right? I'm not saying just eat more magnesium to regulate your calcium. Same thing with vitamin D. What I'm saying is the only way we can truly regulate the calcium, right? Or the vitamin D is to reduce inflammation in the system because anytime there's excess calcium or low D, let's call it based on what you guys see, there's inflammation in the system. The body is trying to prevent calcification from going further and further. So we have to change how we're living. We have to focus on the things that are fueling that fire. Right? Because if we're living in the middle of a war zone physiologically and we take vitamin D, how's that going to do anything? We take calcium, how's it going to do anything? We are living in a war zone. So we have to change slowly how we're living to change our internal environment. Number two, look at what we're eating, right? Are we eating processed foods? We need to eat more fruits, roots, and squashes, right? More metabolic carbohydrates versus processed foods and grains. Are we just eating eggs and chicken, which most people do? We just need to start eating other muscle meats clean raw and non-pasteurized dairy if possible. You don't have to. We need to start eating white fish, shellfish, more shellfish and fatty fish like salmon, herring, sardines, mackerel, etc. We need to start eating more organ meats like kidney and liver and heart and tongue or mixtures, right? These are the things, this is nature's multivitamin. These are the things that contain the fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, K that contain the B12, that contain the minerals like copper, potassium, zinc, magnesium, selenium. We don't need the synthetics. If we started to do that more and we did it strategically and say, what do I need every day while I'm eating this food? How do I strategically kind of set up a frequency to meet my needs, to de decrease the stress response internally while I'm changing my life externally? What will happen? We'll stop the chelation of minerals, right? Even stop copper chelation, because that's a huge mineral when we talk about activating oxygen in complex form producing energy. We'll stop the chelation of magnesium, right? Now we're pulling in other minerals to fill the bucket. So what do we do? We replenish magnesium. We stop burning magnesium. So we can actually regulate PTH, calcitonin, and vitamin D, which regulates calcium. But we're reducing inflammation at the same time. Why? Because we're creating change. We're eating foods that allow us to produce energy, which pay off our debt and put out the fire. So now we're decreasing that calcification in the cell. What happens? You start to see calcium drop in the system and you start to see vitamin D levels regulate. Why? Because you're putting out the fires. I've seen this time and time again with clients just using nutrition alone a lot of the times, and sometimes minor supplementation, not vitamin D or calcium, but we bring down their calcium level, which is like in the three or four hundreds, right? It shouldn't be. It should be in the double digits. It should be below 40, 40 to 50, maybe even lower, right? Um, but over time, using nutrition to lower that stress response, feed the pathways, right? So you can convert storage to active. 
So you can stop depleting magnesium. So you can regulate vitamin D, regulate parathyroid hormone, regulate calcitonin, right? We actually bring that calcium down. Now we decrease calcification in the cell. We produce energy. What is energy? It's antioxidants. It allows us to, to pay off our debt. It allows us to decompensate and allows us to heal. Why? Because now we're reducing inflammation in the body. And this is something we've said for 22 years. Why take something to reduce inflammation, right? That means I'm living in a stressed environment, but I'm taking vitamin D, thinking it's going to regulate things. Or I'm living in a stressed state, chaotic state, right? And I'm going to take calcium. I think it's going to help my bones. Why take something to reduce inflammation when you can just reduce change, reduce or change the things that are causing inflammation? Hope this video makes sense. If you have questions, as always, check out the description or put comments below. I appreciate your support.